Действительно. Hello there, so we're getting ready for church this morning. Just let us know who's there. Um, you can give us a thumbs up or whatever and let us know. We might wait a, a few minutes because ideally it would be good for everyone to be together. Uh, I don't want anyone to miss this opportunity to uh, be together and worship and pray. That's something we could probably do while we're waiting. So we can actually pray together. So I'd like to I'd like to pray for everyone. So Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity to be with brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord, for their health. I thank you, Lord, for homes to live in. I thank you, Lord, for food to eat, and I thank you, Lord, more than anything that you are with us that you are with us, you care for us, mm. you know each one of us, you know every hair on our head. Lord, you know everything about the situation and that's good enough. And we as your children don't need to know all the ins and outs of what's going on. We need to be close to you. And so Father, I would ask that by your spirit this morning that you would uh, bring the saints together. Stir them up, Lord, to look for one another, to, to be together, to praise your mighty name this morning. And all the people said, Amen. Amen.
Messenger makes it. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm sitting here with my cup of tea. My husband's running the electronics, and Kirill is wandering around in the kitchen. But here we are. So um, it was. I was hoping to be able to do this on Zoom. But unfortunately, the lag on Zoom prevents us from worshipping together, so um, it distorts the music too much. So, um, the first thing I'd like you to do is get your emblems ready for communion. So Daisy will be bringing the communion message to us today, which is exciting. Uh, but you'll need your emblems, so I'm going to give you a few minutes uh, to get your emblems ready, so get your emblems ready for um, communion. While you're all getting ready with your emblems, we're going to play the announcements so that you can see um, what's changing, what we're doing to stay in touch. So we'll put the announcements on in a moment and then we will be worshipping together. And we'll have a message from the Lord that he's laid on my heart. And if you would like to, please let me know with your comments if you'd like to fellowship with a cup of tea on Zoom afterwards. The benefit of Zoom, which is free software, is that we can all see each other and we can talk to each other. And we can sit down and have a cup of tea at home and see each other, so that I reckon that would be lovely. But if, you, if you'd if like to do that, please don't hesitate to let us know. And I'll make sure I set the meeting up for you. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we'll give you a few minutes now. We'll put the announcements on and we'll give you a few minutes to get your communion sorted. And um, then that'll be it. So Les is frantically looking for something at the moment. Um, so he's going to put the announcements up and switch the camera. Hi everybody. Send in your email so I can send you any information that I might be getting. Um, encouragement, send me your email so that I can keep you up to date with any studies or anything like that. Send you some news, all of that kind of thing. And get Zoom loaded on your computer. It's free software which will allow you to join us for prayer and Bible study. It's easy to use. You can sit in your own home, have a cup of coffee, and we can see each other and talk to each other and study together. Amen? Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. It's free. It's fun. And we can share together. We can see each other at the same time and we can talk. So get Zoom loaded. It's free. Hey, would you like to learn all this new technology? It's, it's a bit of fun. It's a bit frustrating, but it's a bit of fun as well. So if you want to enjoy um, what's, what we're all learning, so, well get on board and I'm happy to teach you. I'm happy to walk you through it and you'll be amazed what you can you can do. Any of you techno gurus out there that might know how to deal with the lag or sound? At the moment we've got something sorted but it doesn't really allow for all our worship team to be on the same page at the same time. So if you've got some ideas or um, you want to be involved, please, please let us know. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And guess what? We can stop afterwards and have breakfast together. We can sit at our own tables. We can talk to one another, see each other's faces and fellowship together. So zoom, zoom, zoom. Hey kids, get mum and dad to help you use Zoom. Get Zoom on the computer and then your 
um, children's church leaders, Premi and Serelda and Mama can talk to you and you can share children's church just as if you were really there all together. You'll be able to see each other, you'll be able to show each other what you're doing, what you're drawing, all that kind of thing. Get Zoom, get Mum and Dad to get with it and we look forward to seeing you. You can have children's church any day of the week that way. I encourage you to keep tithing. Um, although we're not actually in a building, we still have costs uh, to maintain. Not only that, though, the tithe is what actually already belongs to God. It's not something that we're offering. It's something that belongs to him that we give back. Uh, the offering is something that we give on top of that. Uh, so I encourage you. I encourage you to get online and transfer online. Thank you. to church, you don't have to race home. You're already home. So bring your cup of tea to the computer, um, click on Zoom, and let's sit down and have a cup of coffee together on Zoom where we can see each other's faces and we can chat and all of that. Okay, cheers. worship now so let's have let's have our worship music
you are raising a hallelujah. I pray that the neighbours can hear you sing. I pray that everyone in your house can hear you worshipping the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you.
thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for who you are, Lord. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are a way maker. You are a promise keeper. You are faithful even when we are not. And we are unfaithful every day. So we thank you that you are our God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. If God has laid a word on your heart, a song, a psalm, a poem, a picture, please join us at, in Zoom afterwards and share what God has laid on your heart. Please, we need to hear whatever it is that God has spoken to you. The only thing that really God keeps saying day in and day out to me is, Deborah, be the church. Deborah, be the church. You are my living stones. Church is not a building. Church is not a place. You are the church. So you, beloved saints, you are the church. You are the living stones. And he is calling us to be the church. And we need to be able to press in and ask him how to do that. Each one of us is a living stone. We need to know how to be the church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, thank you. So we're we going to um, conclude our worship there. Uh, so now we will... Um, I'm not sure how to do this because I can do it that way. Oh, it concludes our worship now, so we're going to um, hear Daisy's communion. So if you'd like to prepare yourself for communion, you'd like to get your emblems ready, uh, we're going to share communion. So. Good morning, my name is Daisy and I would like to share communion and the offering with you this morning. Um, we're reading from, I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible and I would love it if you would follow and read along with me. We're going to read from Exodus 25 verse 2. So Exodus 25 verse 2. Tell the people of Israel to take up a collection for me. Accept a contribution from anyone who will heartedly want to give it. The Lord commanded Moses to ask the Israelites to tell them to bring abundantly and they had to accept from everyone that wanted to give to him so that they could build a sanctuary for him to live. My next verse that I wanted to read is from 2 Corinthians 9, um, verse 6 to 15. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. I love this translation. It's saying, here's the point. He who plants sparingly also harvests sparingly. It should give according to what he has decided in his heart, not gradually under compression. For God loves a cheerful giver. We all know this verse, hey? But I didn't know the rest. Moreover, God has the power to provide you with every gracious gift in abundance, so that always, in every way, you will have all you need yourself and be able to provide abundantly for every good cause, as the Tanakh says. In the King James, that verse says, um, As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remain forever. So verse 10 saying, He who provides both seed for the planter and bread for food, will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way, so that you can be generous in everything. And through us, your generosity will cause people to thank God. Because rendering this holy service not only provides for the needs for, of God's people, but it also overflows in many thanks 
people will be giving to God. In offering this service, you prove to these people that you glorify God by actually doing what your acknowledgments of the good news of the Messiah require. Namely, sharing generously with them and with everyone. And in that and in their prayers for you, they will feel a strong affliction for you because of how gracious God has been to you. You know, during this week, um, Lee and Jane, they both blessed me. Um, and it filled my heart with so much joy. I um, thank the Lord um, in my prayers to them. And this scripture was so beautiful for me to say that it will overflow in thanksgiving to the Lord. Um, I would like to... Um, if you can take communion in your own time, take it with me while we listen to a song. be to God for his indescribable gift. What the indescribable gift that Jesus gave, hey? And then in conclusion, I would like to read um, from Philippians 4. It's saying, Philippians 4, verse um, 1, So my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, my dear friends, Keep standing firm in union with the Lord. And then from verse 4, saying, Rejoice in union with the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see how reasonable and gentle you are. The Lord is near. <clears throat> Don't worry about anything. On the contrary, make your request known to God by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Then God's shalom peace. 
passing all understanding will keep your heart and your mind safe in union with the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Thank you, Daisy. That was amazing. Uh, what a blessing. And moreover, how astounding. I hadn't actually seen that. And that very uh, chapter of Philippians is something that has been laid heavy on my heart. Um, all week, in fact, I was sharing it yesterday with uh, Sandy. So... Um, it's testament again to the fact that God's spirit moves amongst us and uh, what is on his heart, he speaks to all of us. Uh, I'm just gobsmacked. So anyway, uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, bring the word to you today and encourage you. So let me pray. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. I thank you for this amazing opportunity. I thank you, Father, for the, the word that Daisy brought in communion that freely you gave, freely. Lord, there was no condition. Uh, you took upon yourself the sin of all humanity. For, for those that didn't know you, you didn't put any condition on it, Lord, on condition that they know you. You just took that to the cross. And I thank you, Lord, that we freely receive from you. And as a result of that, we are free to give. So thank you for what you've done. And Lord, I pray that the word this morning is a blessing uh, to one and all. For those that may have heard before this good news, Lord, take them, take them deeper, Lord. Bring revelation to them, Lord. I pray for those that have never heard the good news before. Lord, that you prepare their hearts and soften their hearts to receive and let them have ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart to understand, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to get my tablet. Um, it wasn't charged, so that makes it a little bit difficult, but it's charged now, so praise God. So what troubling times we're living in. Um, there's lots of things going on, that's for sure. Uh, there's lots of voices out there, lots of speakers. They're all demanding attention, they've all got something to say. Some of them appear to be prophets of doom and gloom, a bit like Jeremiah. Um, and I think it's very easy to get lost in this time. I think it's very easy to get lost in this time, thinking of all the things that are going on. But you know what? There's something else going on at this time too. We're fast approaching a very special time of the year where we celebrate that he is risen. And I don't see a lot of talk going on about that. I see a lot of doom and gloom being spoken of. But, you know, he is risen. We've got a lot to be, be thankful for and, and be happy about. And Daisy just read from Philippians 4. And I'm reading, I'm going to read again from there. As I said, this has been on my heart too, and it's Philippians 4. Uh, and this is the Passion Translation that I'm using. Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. That includes this one. Let joy overflow. For you are united with the Anointed One. Did you ever think about that? The Anointed One lives within you. Um, and I was saying, at times we forget, sometimes we're so focused on the outside world and our own thoughts, we forget that he's actually living within us. It's almost like we need to go, can I come in, Lord, where you are? <laughs> you know, we use that scripture in Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Well, he's already in there. 
But we're so distracted. It's almost like we have to stand at the door of our own heart and knock and come in and, and spend some time with him. So let gentleness be seen in every relationship for our Lord is ever near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. And if you're in caves like I am, what else are you going to do? There's only so much housework you can do. Um, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Right there, that single sentence, tell him every detail of your life, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. That is the essence of counselling. When you go to see a counsellor or therapist, you tell them every detail of your life and they feed that back to you so you can hear what you're saying and then the answers for the problems lie within you. They were there all the time. And so that's exactly what God is telling us to do, to tell him everything. He'll feed mm -hmm. it back to us. Mm -hmm. That there is, if I had to define counselling or therapy, that there is what it is. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. And there's a lot out there that is not authentic or real. Honourable and admirable, res beautiful and respectful, pure and, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. He freely gave. We've got plenty to focus on. Mm. Praising him always. Follow the example of all that we have imparted to you. And the God of peace will be with you in all things. And he will be with us in this. However, for some, this is quite a challenge. It's a very challenging time. The other thought that occurred to me um, is... Perhaps we get to realise now how much we clung to the normality of life the routine things rather than clinging to God. You know, how much we clung to the motions of doing church as opposed to being the church. Mm -hmm. um, we could never really be honest with ourselves while we're in the comfort of the motions because they're comforting, those routine things. Even now, the People are doing videos of showing people how to set routines in homes because it brings comfort. But perhaps we've been a little bit guilty of clinging to those things more than clinging to God. But now in the discomfort of the virus, of course, we can really finally have that gut check. Um, he's the same God yesterday, today, and he will be tomorrow. Um, he's mysteriously wonderful. He's a powerful creator and we can trust him. So let's remember the time that we are approaching. It's a very special time. And, it's, and you know, if we focus, as Philippians said, on what's admirable, authentic, real, and Christ going to the cross is those things. And this is a special time. So Paul's speaking to those people and he's encouraging them to focus on those things. So I encourage you, as he's encouraged me, to focus on those things. Um, remembering that these people that he's talking to were facing persecution and struggle. We're not facing persecution. We are facing struggle, but not persecution. So remember those things. Um, and it's at this time of the year that we're reminded exactly what God has done for us Gentiles. And we are Gentiles. We are, we're not Jews, so we're Gentiles. Uh, we are Gentiles that have been grafted into the vine of life. Jesus, King of the Jews. So, you know, for them it was the only time of the year. It's Yom Kippur, it's called for the Jews and it's held in October. For us it's Easter, the Atonement. But... For the Jews, it's the only time of the year where um, the priest would enter the Holy of Holies. Uh, he'd go into the innermost chamber 
of the temple to make atonement for the sins of Israel. Um, and atonement simply means covering. That's what atonement means, is actually covering. And the purpose of the sacrifice was to bring reconciliation between man and God by covering the sins of the people. Um, there's actually a slide I want to show you which um, Les will have to load up. I'll keep talking, but he'll need to load it and then face the uh, camera towards the TV. So you won't be able to see me momentarily while he shows you this, and that's okay. Um, but the, this was to bring reconciliation between man and God by covering the sins of the people. Now, remember that Jesus, Jesus did all of this for us. He's already done this. This is what he did. Les is shaking his head because he can't find the slide. It didn't go up on there? won't go up on there? It did. Oh, it did before. Anyway. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a slide of the um, actual... Uh, temple showing you the where the mercy seat that that the Jews actually understood where it was sitting and the outer courts and so forth so that you could understand that um, what Jesus has actually done for us to bring us close to him but the high priest would remove his official garments his garments were very um, lavish um, garments but he used to take those off and he used to put a white linen uh, cloth on, which symbolised repentance. And in a biblical context, repentance is recognising that our sin is offensive to God. Um, it, it's not just about saying, sorry, God. Whoop, messed that up. Oh, I made a mistake. That's not repentance. Uh, it's not something that we can fix. We actually can't fix the offence that stands between us and God. Uh, only Jesus can do that. Because he's the perfect, perfect sacrifice. So repentance, it can be shallow. You know, our sorry or our repentance, oh Lord, I seek your forgiveness, wash me clean. Um, it can be quite shallow because we're afraid of going to hell. It can be... We're afraid of dying, so we say sorry. Or, as like a lot of people, you know, like, I'm oh, sorry I got caught. I know you're watching and I know you saw that. That's, um, that's pretty shallow. That's, that's pretty shallow. Oh, he's managed to bring it over, so, um, so you'll be able to have a look at that slide um, in a minute. Uh, and... The kind of shallow, like Cain did. So if we think of Cain and Abel, uh, he murdered his brother. Um, he said to his brother, let's go out into the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? He got caught. And he didn't fall to his knees. He didn't cry out because what he'd done was offended God. His reply was, am I my brother's keeper? To me, it sounds a bit like he's deflecting responsibility or justifying himself. And scripture says, do not be like, in John, it tells us, do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. Um, and why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So we're not to be like Cain, we're not to have a shallow, I'm sorry Lord, or I got caught, or, or I'm afraid of going to hell. We need to understand that when we are repenting, we understand the offence, the, the absolute offence that is to God. Um, it can be deep, and it needs to be deep such as realising how much our sins cost Jesus. You can see on that uh, screen that 
the smoke, which was the pillar of smoke, uh, they knew that God was present when that pillar of smoke rose. Nobody did that. That was something that God was doing. It was supernatural. And that was where the only the priest could go into that end section. No one else could go into that section. Uh, in the section where there's a red... Uh, a red veil and then a white veil. There were um, decorations in those sections of the temple that you can have a look at online. I encourage you to look at those uh, things because they all reflect Jesus. Each one, the candlesticks, the, um, the wash basin that was in there, all have a direct relationship with, the, with Jesus. The outer court there was where the... the the Jew could go to bring the sacrifice. Nobody else could go in there. And there were lots of rules around that. And you can see they, the Israelites were encamped around the temple. So that's what the actual... Tabernacle. Tabernacle, sorry. I beg your pardon. The tabernacle. So um, that tabernacle, as you see there, where the, the Holy of Holies is, our heart is now the tabernacle that God raises his pillar of smoking. Our heart has become the tabernacle of the Almighty God. So you can see that there was a lot of separation in, in Old Testament times um, and Jesus ma made the way for us to be uh, reconciled with God, but not only that, for our bodies to be the temple of the anointed one. So he is actually residing. If you look at that, you see the pillar of smoke go up. Jesus himself is actually residing within. Now, in the so tabernacle of our heart. It's so exclusive, isn't it? Yep. It's exclusive to the tiny few. That's right. That's right. But now he's inclusive. Jesus has included us, the Gentiles. So you can see that um, there was no way. We, we were, not, we're not Jews, so we, we had no access. Uh, and Je Jesus was the access. Um, it needs to be deep. Our repentance needs to be deep. We need his saving grace that washes us clean. Um, and Romans 3 tells us the position we are all in. Uh, but now, independently of the law, the righteousness of God is tangible. Righteousness of God is tangible and brought to light through Jesus. So Jesus has has um, taken the place of that tabernacle, the Anointed One. This is the righteousness that the Scriptures prophesied, and there's the prophetic. That's what God gave us as an image in the Old Testament of what was to come. Uh, that the scriptures prophesied would come. It is God's righteousness made visible through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. And now all who believe in him receive that gift. All who believe in him receive that gift. I don't see any sinner's prayer there. All who believe in him receive that gift. For there is really no difference between us, for we all have sinned and are in need of the glory of God. Yet through his powerful declaration of acquittal, God freely gives away his righteousness. His gift of love and favour now cascades over us all because Jesus, the Anointed One, has liberated us from the guilt, punishment and power of sin. So this is the call for repentance. From a, It's a loving cry for men and women to return to dependence on God. And I urge you, brothers and sisters, at this time, to take your eyes off this, all this stuff that's been spoken everywhere and focus on the fact that we, the anointed one lives within us. We are saved, we are set free, uh, he is risen. We're about to celebrate this all together around the world. Repentance is an essential part of our salvation. 
It requires that we turn away from the sin-ruled life to a life characterised by obedience to God. It's not a life of good works. It's not a life of being nice. It's a life of obedience. Now, the Holy Spirit leads a person to repent, but repentance itself cannot be seen as a good work that adds to our salvation. It doesn't add, it, it opens the door. And the Bible states that people are saved by faith alone in Ephesians. Um, however, there can be no faith in Christ without repentance and no repentance without faith. So you can see those two things go together. The two, they're inseparable. So the tabernacle and the temple gave a clear picture of how sin separates us from the holiness of God. Uh, only the high priest could go in there um, through the veil that hung from the ceiling to the floor, creating a barrier between the people and the presence of God. Once a year, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would enter and offer a blood sacrifice to cover the sins of the people. The very moment when Jesus died on the cross, in Matthew 27, it says, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, mm -hmm. and the earth quaked and the rock, rocks were split. In Hebrews chapter 8 and 9, we beautifully explain how Jesus became our high priest and entered heaven, the holy of holies, once and for all, not by the blood of sacrificial animals, but by his own precious blood on the cross. So he was the high priest that went into that tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, and, and did away with all the, can you imagine, all those goats and sheep still dying today. There wouldn't be enough for all of us. Um, so Christ himself was the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He obtained for us eternal redemption. So as believers, we accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as fulfilment of Yom Kippur. Um, we're living in a time, beloved, when we need to be in right relationship with God. We need to know with confidence his saving grace and love for us. We need to pray and we need to seek him. We need to seek him and repent that we'll be restored if we have not if, we, if the light of our first love has has dimmed we need to repent we need to we need to be restored in relationship and for someone who doesn't even have that relationship i urge you if you're listening to reach out to seek him um, that you'll be called a child of god that you will know his provision and protection and that you'll know his great love for you. That you'll be able to follow the Apostle Paul's instructions in Philippians 4. To be cheerful with joy, joyous celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow. For you are united with the Anointed One. If, if that's something that you would, you would want to know, that you are reconciled with God, that you are forgiven, you are set free, then please contact me later. Let's, let's talk together. Um, let's talk together afterwards. Don't let this moment go by. Uh, be reconciled to him that loves you so much and gave his son uh, that I can pray with you. So think about this time that we're entering into and think about the anointed one that resides within this, tab this tabernacle. Hallelujah. And let me pray this prayer. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God 
will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is, the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy ones. Amen. Amen. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honour and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. And now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government and realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised, not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. And he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ and has given him the highest rank above all others. And now we, his church, are his body on the earth. And that which fills him, who is being filled by it. Amen. So, I pray that this has been a blessing for you. I pray that God draws your attention and that our focus begins to go to Jesus, the one who is risen, the anointed one who lives within. I pray this has been a blessing. God bless.